Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and it's time for our monthly sponsored video from Plex. And this month I thought we would take a look at a fun nerdy experiment, which is whether or not you can direct play high bitrate media over the internet. We of course can do that on our home networks. Many of us do that uh, with our Plex libraries, myself included. And a few months ago, I got a new internet connection at my house that I uh, purchased from Comcast. It's called their Gigabit Pro service. It's not cheap, but it solved a lot of bandwidth problems I was having both for speed and reliability. And I have two gigabits now of symmetrical bandwidth, both up and down. And a friend of mine on the other end of town recently got the service as well. And we were experimenting with Plex uh, going back and forth between our two houses. But we're only about a mile apart and we're basically plugged into the same router at the head end a few miles away. So I wanted to do something where we actually connect over the internet and see if I can get a movie to direct play to some other location from right here. Now, of course, you need the right amount of bandwidth. And what we're going to do to experiment with this today is use something called Shadow, which is a game streaming service that I recently subscribed to. But they give you a Windows desktop in a data center. And this data center happens to be in New York City, uh, which is about two or three hours from where I live here in Connecticut. So we're going to have some fun here today and see if we can get uh, some direct play going over the internet. Now, before we get to this, I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure, this is a paid sponsorship from Plex. However, they are not approving or reviewing this video before it is uploaded, and all of the opinions you're about to hear are my own. So let's get into it now. We're going to start with a pretty big file here, a 4K Blu-ray rip that's on my personal server. And this is a file with an 80 megabit per second bit rate, which is quite a lot, obviously. And of course, we're going to need to have enough upstream bandwidth to get this thing going at a rate of 80 megabits per second. And then, of course, on the other side, we need to be able to download data at that rate of speed to have the video play back perfectly. Now, on my home network, no problem. I've got gigabit uh, networking all over the house, and I can easily play this back. But when we're pushing packets over the internet, it can often be another story. So the first thing we need to do is figure out how much bandwidth we have to do all of this. And what we're first going to do is run a speed test on the network that I have here at home. And I'm going to make a lot of you jealous here real quick. Let's go over to my uh, Unify Pro router here and run the speed test. In full disclosure, Unify did send me this router free of charge for a review that I did a while back. And I did a whole series on the installation of this fiber optic internet service, if you're curious. But as you can see here, my download speeds are running at about 2 gigabits at the moment. My kids are home, so they're watching YouTube and stuff, so that eats into it a little bit. And now we've got the upload speeds here. And as you can see, we're pretty close to 2 gigabits per second on the upload right now as well. So we easily have the bandwidth here to accommodate uh, the movie that we're about to play. So now that we know we have enough upstream bandwidth to sustain 80 megabits per second, we also need to make sure that the computer we're playing things back on has enough downstream bandwidth to accommodate that. So we're going to switch over here to the shadow machine. Again, this is running in a data center in New York City. So even though it looks like it's running locally here on my Mac, it is actually running someplace else. And let's see what kind of internet connection uh, this shadow cloud machine has. So we'll run a quick internet speed test. It's got a pretty ridiculously low ping rate there. Um, and we're running at about a gigabit downstream. So this is more than enough to be able to direct play that movie in theory. So that's a good sign. Uh, let's take a look here, though, and let the test run out and see what kind of upstream bandwidth Shadow provides. And it looks like on the upstream, it's only about 105 megabits per second. This is not important for this exercise because we are streaming from here to there. So the upstream here is important and the downstream there is equally important. But if we were running the server on the shadow machine in New York City, that 105 megabits per second bandwidth might be a little too close for comfort, especially with some of the higher bitrate 4K films that are out there that sometimes can run as high as 100 megabits per second. But for now, because we've got two gigabits upstream and we only need about 80 megabits, and we have a gigabit on the downstream on the other side, we should be in good shape. So let's spin this up now and see how it all works. Now, typically when I am away from home, I have my Plex server automatically transcode video, no matter what it is, 
uh, down to about a 2 megabits per second 720p stream. And I do that because most of the time when I am trying to access my server remotely, I'm either at a hotel with really lousy bandwidth or I'm on the road with my cell phone. And typically, 2 megabits per second is what I found works the best. Now, in this instance, we are going to go for the gusto here and just go back to playing the original quality. But I'm going to pull up a, a little three-up view here so you can see exactly what's going on uh, in this connection. So right now, we've got in the background there the shadow uh, server, and we've got the Plex Windows client running over there. Uh, the white box in the upper left-hand corner is the real-time usage meter from my router. And then on the right is my uh, app, my Plex Dash app running on my phone that gives me an idea as to what's currently being served from my Plex server. And as you can see here, it is transcoding, hardware transcoding, uh, the video from 4K HEVC to H.264 at 2 megabits per second. But what I'm going to do now is go over to the playback settings here and crank it up to original quality. And then what I'm going to do is go back here and hit play. And let's see what happens. And you can see now that the transcoding shifted away from transcoding and over to direct playback. And you can see my meter here is cranking away, uh, running at anywhere from 80 to 100 megabits per second, depending on the variability in that particular video file. And we're doing it. It's playing back just fine. And it looks like it's working pretty nicely here. Now, of course, I am on a very expensive Comcast residential connection, and I'm connecting on the other end to a computer located in a New York City data center. So we've got a very reliable connection between our two points here. Uh, it's possible on a residential connection on both ends, you may not see this kind of performance. But the bottom line here is that it's definitely possible if you have enough bandwidth at both locations to be able to play back your films or whatever else you want to play back uh, without any real limitations in uh, the quality of the video. You can do a direct play, again, provided you've got enough bandwidth between the two places you are communicating with. And of course, you want to make sure that you don't have a data cap that might uh, quickly get eaten up. Typically, when you're looking at a Netflix movie or something like that, you're in the 20, 25 megabit per second territory at the most. And here, of course, we're cranking away at 80 to 100 because these Blu-ray movies have just so much more video and audio data on them uh, versus what you typically get with a streaming provider. Now, every Plex client has the ability to set the remote quality level. Uh, so right now I'm on the Windows TV client here and you can see that it's set to uh, 2 megabits per second on remote quality at the moment. But if I select that here and go over to original, uh, that will force it to never transcode video from the remote server. And if you're at a fixed location where you know you always have that bandwidth available, then set it to that and you don't have to go in and do it every time you start up a piece of media. By the way, the online quality here is for uh, the online services that Plex offers, like their free movie service and the web shows and stuff. Uh, that's different than the remote quality setting here, which is for the remote server that you're connecting to. Now, as many of you know, Plex supports over-the-air TV if you have a compatible antenna. And what it will do is it'll pull down those digital TV signals over the air and bring them right into your Plex server so that your clients can play back either live TV or record stuff with the DVR feature. And right now, I've got a broadcast here running from my local CBS affiliate. Uh, this is a 1080i MPEG-2 signal. That's what you get over the air at the time I'm recording this video. And right now, I've got the transcoder doing what it usually does for me here, converting that 1080i MPEG-2 to a 720p H.264. But what I'm going to do now is go and click on Play Original Quality. Now, watch what happens here. Look how fast this goes, first of all. This is over the internet. And now we're going direct stream here. We're pushing about, I don't know, 10 megabits per second or so of uh, MPEG-2 video data. Uh, but in the testing I was doing a little bit earlier, it was flawless. It was working as well over the internet as it does here in the house. And that really surprised me just how well this worked over the internet, again, with a good, reliable connection. 
And what's funny about this MPEG-2 video is that this is an area where if you try to use 2 gigahertz Wi-Fi in your home to do this, it often fails on you because the packets really all need to get to their destination for this to work. Uh, but here over the internet with a good fiber connection on both ends, no problem. It's working just as well uh, over the internet as it does inside of my house. And that was really pretty impressive. So the bottom line here is that direct play over the internet is very doable provided you've got the bandwidth and the connection reliability. And I think if you have some kind of fiber optic internet connection at home with decent upstream speeds and you're visiting places that have decent downstream speeds, then it might be possible to serve your Plex media over a lower cost device. Maybe a cheap NAS box or a little mini PC that can't do hardware transcoding all that well could actually be a pretty decent Plex server if you are doing direct play, because just like on your home network, you're just pushing out uh, the raw data as opposed to having to process it first. So something to think about and maybe something to play with if you have a decent upstream connection as well. I've got a whole series on my adventure to go from a very lousy cable connection to the fiber optic connection I have right now. It was a fun thing that I know a lot of you subscribers enjoyed following and it's been great to have all of this bandwidth finally. But for me, the most important part was the connection reliability that I didn't have before, which was making my live stream so difficult. And it's great now to have not only the reliability, but the bandwidth too. That's going to do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Brian Parker, Jim Peter, Tom Albrecht, Frank Lewandowski, Mark Bollinger, and Chris Allegretta. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.